Hi, Liza. Hey, Judy, how are you? Oh, a little bit worn out. I but bet. I'm glad I made it. Um, I'm excited to be here and uh, I could use the diversion. Well, we will provide that diversion for you. Pretty much all the slides are the same. So we'll just dive in in a couple minutes and talk about ergonomics. That sounds good. I was able to dial in. I was giving the baby a bottle and was able to dial in for your jam board and I loved it. I, I couldn't awesome. interact because of, uh, because of holding a baby, but other than that, right. it, was, uh, it was really good. Awesome, I'm glad to hear that. Holding the baby was a way more important uh, occupation at that moment. Right, now can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Good, good. We have a uh, kind of spotty bandwidth here. Last night I, I tested it and I ended up having to use my phone as a hotspot. So I wanted to make sure that uh, I could Ooh. be heard, seen not necessarily that badly. Um, I had a princess crown and a princess necklace on until about five minutes ago. <laughs> Oh, you could have left them on. I thought about it. I actually, you know, feel like a princess today. So. It would have worked. All right, I'm going to go ahead. Go ahead. Wash your hand just real quick. It, we're making progress. Good. I'm like, I'm like two weeks post-op. So uh, forward progress. I can't really use it yet, but it's there. It's a help. It's a nice helper hand, but that's its only function right now. But that's okay. All right, let me get the share going. And I have it up on my computer, so I have the chat up at the same time because I found earlier I needed to have a second place for the chat. So uh, I'll have it up at the same time. So I'll, I'll be kind of watching it as we go. Okay. Yeah, I was still trying to figure that one out because I'll, I'll be solo this afternoon, but uh, it'll be okay. It will be. All right, I'm gonna move that up there. Give everybody one more minute to jump in and then we'll get started. All right, Judy, you ready to go? I'm ready. All right, so if you are here, it might be because you have been, like all of us, sitting in your seat for way too long and need some ergonomics help. Um, so we are just gonna dive in pretty quickly. My name is Alyssa Wern and I am an occupational therapist um, and I am pleased to pre be presenting with Judy Schoonover, who is also an occupational therapist. Um, and you'll see there's our contact information on the screen. We have our bios in here, but really we want to spend time talking about ergonomics because that's the part that's super important to us. So you can go back and read all the information about me and her. We're going to jump in. So this is a wakelet of resources. If you've not ever heard about a wakelet, um, think about it as if Padlet and Pinterest had a baby. So it is a one-stop shop kind of for everything on a topic. You can get to this wakelet either by the short link that's on the left or by scanning the QR code and that will also take you there. Um, in a minute, I will drop the link to this presentation in the chat box as well. Um, so we're not gonna show you this full video, but I wanted you to have this as a resource because I think when, some, when we start talking about ergonomics, I think sometimes, um, we, we get in the habit of thinking, oh, well, that's about having a standing desk or that's about having a right, the right, you know, two monitors. And some of those things play into ergonomics, but I think the biggest picture is making sure that our workspace is as 
appropriately set up for us as possible. We know some people, myself included, we're kind of winging it with some of our setups at home or other places. And our goal is to just give you some background information and some ideas about how um, we can maybe make this ergonomics thing better for you or for the students that you work with. Go ahead, Judy. And that's one of our biggest concerns is with so much remote learning going on, our students and maybe their caregivers aren't as aware as they could be of some of the setups that they need to, um, or they would benefit from, from using. So as you can see in the picture, there are several setups. I'm sure the one on the left looks very familiar to some of you. There's a cat on the couch, the laptop or the iPad is wherever they can find space. Um, you can see the family in the middle at the kitchen table, and there's four different size individuals and one different size table. And then finally, you see um, our hero, Mike Murata, with his setup, and he's thought through it, and he's had a lot of experience. And so um, he is working through the, um, the setup with um, a lot of different heights and a lot of different access points where he doesn't have to do um, a lot of body contortions in order to access it. And Eliza, I, I think you probably can see on the um, on the Zoom chat that the closed captions are not showing up. I just I just turned them on, but their their closed captioning is you have to turn it on yourself. So if you're in the closed captioning, if you're in the full screen mode, you can go to more and you'll see where it says show or hide subtitles and captionings, or you can view the full transcript. Um, so that is how you turn on the captioning. Um, I can turn on the Google captions just as a, a secondary. Um, we'll go ahead and do that. And thank you for bringing that up. And then hopefully this menu is gonna go away in a minute. Hold on, here we go. All right, go ahead. This is me. So why is ergonomics important? So in the big scheme of things, um, when we're talking about ergonomics, a big piece of the goal is so that we avoid injury, if at all possible, right? So we don't want to have a workplace or non-workplace injury or illness that keeps you from being able to do your job. And that holds true for students that they are not able, if they're not able to do their occupation as a student because of an injury, then we have an issue, right? Um, so this is just uh, some information from 2018, 2019, and you'll see that top long bar, the fourth one down, is the count of illness cases for education and health services. So I think manufacturing beats it out by just a little bit. But we're one of the top three injury and illnesses industries, and we want to try to do what we can um, to avoid that, right? Um, and in terms of specific illnesses, probably the one that we're most familiar with is carpal tunnel. So um, in terms of carpal tunnel syndrome, obviously this in, in, the, in the industries of education, training, and library occupations, um, the amount of people who um, over the series of their work history have reported ever having a carpal tunnel issue is pretty high as an unadjusted prevalence. You know, we're looking at about 6% of people across the day, um, across the, the years that they work. Um, so we want to break down a couple of the risk factors, right? So force is a big risk factor. The amount of energy that you are exerting to do a specific activity, right? We know that the, the harder it is to do a specific activity, um, that we know we need to exert more energy, which means you're going to have more fatigue, which can lead to those muscular skeletal disorders or injuries. Repetition is also a portion of what makes an injury occur. So we know not only does it play into how, how hard we do something or how much force is involved, but the amount of times that we're doing that under repetition. So typing is one of those things. Mouse use is one of those things that happen with repetition, right? Um, and the amount of repetition, whether it's multiple tasks that are repeated or one task within that hourly or daily schedule can lead to more musculoskeletal disorder. And a task is highly repetitive 
if the time before another task occurs again is less than 30 seconds. So we're, if we're doing a lot, right, a lot of our mousing and writing and typing will exceed that and be considered repetitive. The third factor we really look at when we look at um, what those risk factors are is posture. So we know we use awkward postures all the time. We're really good about kind of sitting in something that we might think is comfortable, um, but that awkward posture when we're extending to reach for something, um, maybe depending on how we're sitting when we're doing typing or keyboarding, all of those awkward postures kind of put excessive force on our joints, right? And our joints tend to be most efficient when they're in the middle range of the joint, right? Um, so when we're doing something awkward, we're usually at the far ranges of, you know, whatever that joint is. And we want to try to keep short, keep, keep working within those middle ranges of the joint as much as is possible. Um, because we know that risk factor increases when we are constantly working outside of the middle of the range or that we do things for a long period of time without break time that allows that joint and those muscles to recover. So what can we do? Because obviously the answer isn't stop working, right? So the, the, the most important thing I think we can do is control what we can, right? So we can't stop working. We can't stop the fact that maybe some of us are working from less than ideal situations but we can control the variables that we can. And that's part of what we're gonna talk through. Um, we obviously can't control your task list, what meetings get scheduled for you, who else is at home or wherever you're working that you need to support, um, what the weather's like outside when you have time for a break or when whatever normal is will return. We can't control those. So we need to control the things that we can. We can control planning ahead, the chair we use, what our setup for keyboard and mouse and desk looks like, making sure the monitor is working for us, our lighting is good, as much as possible, what is around us, um, and our lifestyle and stress level. I know we can't control completely our stress level, but there are some things we can do to help make it so that we're sitting in a more ergonomic structure. Because um, now we're going to talk a little bit about seating and what that means for your whole body. So we want to make sure that we're starting with the seat, right? The best chair, there isn't one best chair that fits everybody perfectly, right? The best kinds of chairs are those that are highly adaptable with many ways to adjust it, right? The more adjustable a chair is, the more you can contour it and set it up for you. So we know that our task performance, you know, we shouldn't be sitting all day every day. Nobody, regardless of what the job they is, the, what the job is that they do, should be sitting for long periods of time all day every day. But our seating option needs to support us when we are seated, right? A good ergonomic chair is going to have tons. It may not have as many as you see in the picture, but it's going to have tons of adjustments, right? We want to make sure it's not putting pressure on the back of our thighs or knees. We want to make sure that it has a five point base, if at all possible, down at the, down at the floor. Um, a two point base is not going to give you much support and a three point barely gives you more. Um, wheels and coasters that are appropriate for the type of flooring you have in the house, right? You want to make sure you have wheels that can conquer the carpet um, and those kinds of things and that, that you have a good solid backrest. Go for it, Judy. So the reality is that most of us can't go out and buy an ergonomically appropriate chair. Um, the reality is for our students, um, they may not be able to do that. And the reality is there may be five or six kids working in the same space. So what we need to do and what we need to think about is what we can do with what we've got around the house or in whatever area that we're working. So when working in a chair or a sofa without enough back support, try using a rolled up towel, a pool noodle, even a three ring binder works really well to kind of give us that little wedge that we need. Um, the sufficient back support will reduce strain and improve comfort. And we all have seen people, we, we've been doing these online meetings for months and months, leaning into their computers, leaning into their screens. And at the end of the day, the shoulders, the neck, everything else is very uncomfortable. So just some of the fixes 
may do the trick. Next. So we want to sit pretty. When our feet dangle unsupported, um, the load of the upper body and the arms is shifted. And so that causes a lot of discomfort. It's an easy enough fix to use books, boxes, a footrest as needed. Um, adjusting the seat height so the thighs are parallel to the floor and the knees are level, that gives us the proximal stability that we need in order to access the screen, in order to respond on the keyboard. Seat cushions can raise a, a seat height and reduce the contact stress on the hips. Um, we want to fully engage or build up the backrest with pillows so that we're not leaning in or leaning out. And if the arm has armrest, keep in mind that not all those armrests are comfortable. We end, may end up with shrugged shoulders and tight neck muscles. So adjust the height to below the um, bottom of the elbows. If they're in the way or can't be adjusted, get, get rid of them or choose a chair without armrests. Okay. Sitting at home might look like this. And if you look at the gentleman, eh, maybe he's okay, but take a look at his neck. His, his head is leaning forward. Take a look at his shoulders. They're slightly shrugged in order to meet the table surface. He's looking down. Um, he's got um, a hard back chair and he's having to lean forward. Um, you can imagine that after 15, 20 minutes, he may be kind of uncomfortable in this kind of position. So, um, and by the way, uh, use the chat line, please, to think about um, ways that you've adjusted your own workspace, or if you have questions, or if you have resources, please fill those in and also use the Google form to share any ideas that you might have. So this guy just used what he had in order to adjust. And I think he looks more comfortable. I don't know about you all, but he's got a wedge under his, his hips, his knees are, are slightly, um, or his hips are slightly flexed, so his knees may be even above his hips a little bit. He's got lumbar support with the use of a cushion. He's leaning back in his chair instead of that, that Google um, or that Zoom lean forward. He's supporting his um, forearms on the edge of the table, so he's not having to hold his arms up himself. And he's brought the screen up with a couple of boxes. So he's looking at the screen more at eye level instead of having to look down or lean. Okay. So we're gonna talk a little bit about now that we've gotten a chair set up of some sort, that we have a better monitor set up. So uh, the monitor and the eyes do really play into um, how that neck and our head feel at the end of the day. So this is just kind of some good guideline pictures in terms of what to do and what not to do. You see the, the young lady on the left, kind of that zoom lean that, that Judy mentioned. Um, this is what we, we don't want to have happen. She is way too close to that screen um, and is gonna end up with some more eye fatigue, but is also gonna end up with some, some back pain and some neck pain. So you'll see that second picture um, kind of just situated herself a little bit better, getting her knees close to 90, getting that elbow kind of close to 90, and again, arranging her back and her neck and her eyes so that they are good distance from the screen. Um, and you'll see the gentleman on the right kind of made his own standing desk. Um, he's got a box, which I know we all have at our house, and a cereal box, and kind of gave himself a good standing workspace where his eyes are at the monitor level. Um, and that um, that allows him to be able to type also with his arms at arm level. Um, the screen angle also matters. So it's not just about having the height the right height, but we want to make sure that it's angled correctly to avoid glare and accommodate whatever your specific vision needs. So you'll see how the monitor is kind of tilted so that the, uh, the top is a little further back. Um, just to adjust some glare that might happen depending on what your lighting situation is. Um, and I think when we talk about screen angle, we also kind of want to talk in there about ergonomics when it comes to your AAC users, thinking about how do we make sure that we've positioned that device, whether it's an iPad or a dedicated device, to not have screen glare. Because I think it's something that, you know, our AAC users may not have the language to tell us, I can't see it well. Um, but those iPads are really glare magnets when it comes to being able to have it at the right height and adjusted. Um, so we want to make sure that they can see it well so they can use it well. So we want to also make sure that we're avoiding eye fatigue. 
And that's Judy's slide, and I'll stop talking. That's okay. So you want to make sure that you take a, the opportunity to look away from the monitor and focus at a distance. I don't know about some of you, but sometimes as I'm lying down in bed at the end of the a long day in front of the screen, my eyes are tearing up constantly, constantly. And uh, there's a lot of eye fatigue going on. Um, the the um, eye doctors are seeing more people coming in with um, blurry vision, um, difficulty converging. Um, all the all the different things that come up when we're staring in one space for a long period of time. So there's easy, easy, easy fixes for this, and we're going to talk about them a little bit more in the next slide. So the 2020 rule, take a break for 20 seconds and look away at something about 20 feet away about every 20 minutes. And those of you that are working with children and coaching them, that would be a wonderful way of setting up some natural breaks throughout the day as you're educating them and also teaching them about good, healthy ergonomic habits. Next. So you want to reduce the monitor glare as, as um, Alyssa was talking about. You want to make sure that you've dimmed the overhead lights. Um, sometimes we are facing the window instead of facing away from the window, and that makes um, it very uncomfortable. Um, it, these are things that we don't necessarily think about until we realize how uncomfortable we are. You want to locate a workstation beside a window and overhead lights, not in front of, behind, or directly below. You want to make sure that the monitor is angled away from the lights. Um, use of curtains or blinds when possible to cover the windows or skylights. Avoiding fluorescent lighting if you can, using filters or fixtures. You can either even cover the monitor with an anti-glare um, screen, and you can use those uh, very inexpensive uh, colored uh, 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 Flex, not plexiglass, PVC um, materials that you get at the office supply store that, that separate pages. You can also build a little um, tent over the monitor with uh, a couple of file folders or a box. Next. So, <laughs> computer vision syndrome. I'm not sure why we've got amazing echo. Let me try again. Um, computer vision syndrome is, is a real thing. It's not a, you know, COVID, COVID related diagnostic. It's been there long since. Um, and there are some common symptoms to CVS. So eye strain, headaches, blurred vision, dry eyes, um, neck and shoulder pain. These are all things that we probably over the last six months since all this happened, six, nine months, we can say we probably had these symptoms. Um, and a lot of these symptoms are from the things that we have discussed, poor lighting, glare, um, improper viewing distance, uh, poor seated posture, uncorrected vision problems, maybe some of us are due or overdue to get our eyes checked as a whole, um, and or a combination of these factors. And there's some more information from the American Opt Optectric Association down there about computer vision syndrome and what we can do. Um, again, this is just kind of a good visual to use to remind us of some of the things we've talked about and then some of the things that you could do to combat computer vision syndrome. Making sure we're regularly eye checking, we're exercising or moving around our eyes, we have proper lighting, um, we have our monitors clean and doesn't have anything on it that maybe is making it more difficult to see. We've got it adjusted correctly. We make sure we're blinking, you know, frequently. And again, following that 2020 rule, every 20 minutes, taking a break for 20 seconds and looking 20 feet away. Um, and I think the, the help is that the more that we do that, um, the more likely we're going to be able to get our eyes through a day of computer work. At this point, the option doesn't exist for us to just say we're not going to use computers but we need to do what we can to make sure that we're supporting our eyes as best as possible. There are a couple of extensions that I have found helpful over the last couple of months. Um, this first one is called Night Shift. Um, and this basically does do some shifting of the, the colors on your monitor. So it's not a filter you put over them. It is a, an extension that makes a digital or electronic filter of colors. Um, you can schedule it so that it happens at a certain time every night. Um, that at seven o'clock every night, your computer shifts to the night shift colors. And you can also play around with the, 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 
the the tones of the colors or or um, the shift of the the um, types of colors um, and temperature of that color, whether it's warmer or less warm. Um, I also want to encourage you all to use the things that are built into our computers, right? So there are great ease of access for vision supports built into Windows computers. You can make your cursor larger. You can change the color so that it is contrast so it's easier to find. You can add a trail so that you can track it a little bit more easily. Sometimes I'll adjust my magnification during the day so that as, I, as the day goes on, maybe I need to read that Microsoft Word document at 125% instead of the regular 100% or larger. Um, and you can also make your computer go into contrast mode, which is what you see down on the bottom, where you've got you know black background with white text instead to give your eyes some supports. Um, there are also similar options on the Mac. Also, using dictation is a great way to help us. Um, um, they add, they add it in across the Mac atmosphere, whether it's a phone or an iPad or the computer dark mode, um, which does change kind of the, the color, uh, background and giving you some contrast support, um, the cursor size, um, or color contrast. So those are things I would absolutely try. You can also use hover text, which is new and does what you see in the picture. When, I, when you scroll over that text, it automatically kind of magnifies it so that it is larger and easier to read. On the iPad itself, I also use dictation, dark mode, just like I would on the computer. Um, and I use assistive touch a lot. Um, so assistive touch is a little kind of white button that stays open on my computer where I can create shortcuts. So I have a shortcut that goes to screenshots. If I need to do a lot of screenshots of, let's say, an AAC device or of directions for something, I don't have to go four layers deep or, you know, hold down the power button. I can do a quick tap in there and it will come up. Um, and you can use it for many other uh, shortcuts as well. Um, and then you can do the regular color and contrast and invert colors on your device. And maybe you switch to dark mode earlier in the day, so at one o'clock instead, which makes it a little bit easier. Um, so there are some options on the Chrome operating system. So you can increase the size of options. You can use select to speak. You can use the screen reader or magnifier. You can adjust the mouse cursor size or go into high contrast mode. Um, and then that, that quick link, that link that says Chrome support takes you to additional information about how to adjust those in the Chrome operating system for those of you guys who are on Chromebooks. Um, and I think the biggest thing is that small changes can really equal a large effect, right? So when it comes to changing your document backgrounds, if you're writing a lot in Microsoft Word or in Google Docs, um, changing that mouse cursor, using a filter, whether that's on the computer or it's a little bit more low tech with glasses, um, and just changing your display properties, sometimes increasing the resolution or the text size across the entire system will help so that you're not straining to try to see what does that say and you're leaning in more and more. Um, and it might be that what you need in the morning is different from what you need after lunch when we know our eyes and hands and backs and necks are starting to tire. Um, it's also important to make sure that you are staying hydrated. So part of that 2020-20 break should also be make sure you're taking a second to drink some water of some sort. Um, I'll drop the Wakelet link in the box in a minute, Harrison. Uh, go ahead, Judy. So typically at this point, it's we've been 20 minutes into our presentation, we would be taking a quick stretch break. Um, and we're not going to spend a lot of time, but we have included a stretch break link at the end of our presentation. You could, though, do your 2020 20 right now while we're chatting. So I'll go ahead and slide over to the next slide. My aching neck. We've re alluded to the aching neck already. Do you sometimes feel like this flamingo that your neck has been twisted and curled all up? I'm sure a lot of you have and we're going to talk a little bit about what you can do to make you feel, feel a little bit better. So um, for example phone calls. How many of you have been on your computer, on the phone, and doing a half a dozen other things at the same time? Um, Try using some of those simple phone holders. Those of you that have attended assistive technology conferences for years, you know darn well you've got a half a dozen of those little things that the vendors gave out. Plus, um, 
one of the fixes that I did recently was I turned my paper towel folder sideways and shoved my phone in that so it stuck up. And I've also used that for my iPad. Um, set the phone against something to free your hands and retain a neutral neck during the call. Don't cradle your phone. Use a headset or headphones, use the speaker feature and make your own um, phone stand. There are half a dozen um, or more phone stand ideas out of easily found materials such as cardboard. You can find it on Instructables or, or any website. You can just Google it and you'll find um, a lot of ideas. And we would love to hear what your ideas are and see any of your novel and unique ways of uh, adjusting your workstation and the way that you handle more than one um, digital device at the same time, okay? So document holders, for example, the purpose is to move the document to a better viewing angle and distance. Some of the concerns that, that we might have are the documents flat, resting on a flat surface. And this is a really good idea to teach our kids when they're um, copying from one surface to another. Um, besides the potential for next pain, this position requires more visual tracking and visual memory. Some of the really quick um, and easy solutions are taping the document to the side of the screen or on the wall next to the screen. Um, you can Velcro closed pins to the side of the screen and have the closed pins clip um, the document. You can also create a document holder from a styrofoam cup. You just cut a little slit in it or a pool noodle and you just pop that, that document right in. Another thing that you can do is you can turn a notebook inside out and um, clip the papers inside the notebook in, in the binder rings. So I'd love to hear some of your ideas as well. Our hands, wrists, and fingers are also suffering during this time when we're spending so much more time using the keyboard than we are using any other kind of um, modalities to, uh, to communicate. So let's talk a little bit about that. If you're using the dining room table to allow for an adjustable or an adequate workspace for a computer model, moderate monitor and laptop, think about using a blanket or a towel. I don't know about you all, but I found at times at the end of the day, my, my wrists were actually bruised because I'd been leaning against a, a resistant surfaces, surface in order to have that proximal stability to use my fingers for keyboarding. So I started to have to think about where my keyboard was, how it was angled, and um, how I could support my, my wrists, my hands, my arms, and my shoulders in order to be a little bit more comfortable. You can use something as simple as a seat pillow or a blanket to elevate yourself if the surface is too high in order to contact the keyboard in the right position. Next. So keyboards and mice, you can place the keyboard just above the lap level. So the arms tilt downward while using the keyboard. And ideally, if, if you can, having a, a separate keyboard from your computer or your iPad um, really works out so that you can put the keyboard exactly where you need it, it to be and still have the monitor at eye level. The keyboard and mouse should be positioned to allow the elbows close to the body because the further they are from the body, the more um, you're using your muscles for other purposes and um, you're building up that potential for those aching shoulders and necks. Place the keyboard and mouse close enough so that the device can be reached comfortably. Oftentimes when we're trying to multitask and we've got several devices going, we're doing a lot of twisting and turning and reaching. So you wanna make sure everything's close together um, and close to the midline of the body, okay? Um, so really, really quickly, I just wanted to show, um, this is another one of my favorite Chrome extensions um, that this allows a custom cursor. So there are tons. There's like thematic ones and holiday based ones, but you can go in and find a different cursor that's a little bit easier, especially if you're working with kids, a little bit easier for a kid to be able to track and find. Um, so that's the link to that. Um, and we're going to jump in and talk a little bit more about alternate positions. So a lot of us um, are exchanging places in the household during the day in order to work. Um, I'm visiting my son-in-law right now and he's a psychologist and so he's working in one of the rooms. My daughter is working in another room and I'm working in a third room and we're handling a baby and a toddler at the same time. So we have lots of different spaces that we have to deal with and we have to find quiet places to work. So you wanna identify a place to work and you may need a few cushions or blankets or notebooks 
in order to use as a base. You want to make sure your back is supported. You want to make sure that your laptop is in a good position. I'm not going to read all the details on the screen, but you can see the ideas. And also in our wakelet, we have actual how-tos and pictures and directions um, that were from, I think, uh, UNC, UCLA. Um, so we've got lots of ideas for these different positions and taking breaks. But most importantly is also the safety check of looking at where you're working, making sure that there's no cords out, making sure that your workspace is, is clear. So not only are you comfortable, but that you're not going to stand up and, and trip over something or someone else is gonna stand up and trip over something. Next. So working while reclining, this is, you know, a lot of our favorite positions. We work off of the sofa, we work off of the bed, but you still need to remember to support the back. Um, start by building that continuous support from the hips through the shoulder blades so there's not a missing spot that ends up um, with us curling our shoulders or leaning forward. Elevating the knees and supporting the knees from ankle um, to me is, is a great way not only of making our legs and our hips more comfortable, but also a prop for where the keyboard and the monitor go. And use a lap tray with, with a firm surface or position the screen as close to eye level as possible. And for those of you that shop at Costco, some of those big boxes that you carry your groceries out are perfect to kind of make like a little laptop box um, in order to support it. There's also ways of making pizza boxes into easels where you can lean your iPad um, and adjust the angle and the, the, um, the distance from your eyes to the screen with something as simple as, as one or two pizza boxes. Next, working on the couch, again, back, back, back. We wanna support the back. As you can see with this young woman, she's uh, hunched forward that she's nicely reclined and it seems so comfortable with those pillows, but she's ending up having to hunch forward and crane her neck forward in order to access. She's also got her elbows pushed back and then she's trying to, to get to the, the keyboard at the same time and her materials are um, out of reach. So you want to have that nice continuous support on your back. You wanna make sure your laptop is um, is raised up so that the screen is closer to your eye level. And um, for those laptops that have those really nice backward angle for the screen and the keyboard, you want your keyboard monitoring up so you can rest your wrist comfortably at the edge of the laptop to access the keyboard and take breaks for goodness sake. This one says 30 minutes, we say 20 minutes, okay? And I think one of the things that we really want to make sure of is that all of these interventions are things that are really important and great for you as a therapist or a teacher or even a parent working from home. Um, but we, we use the, the classic oxygen mask, you know, analogy is we want to make sure you're taking care of yourself so that you can help those students um, with the supports they need, including these ergonomic supports. Um, so I think it's really important to, to make sure that these interventions are good for you. And once you're in a space where you figured out some things that work for you, it's going to be easier to figure out some things that work for either your own kids or for students that you're working for. Because um, we really want to model what we want our kids to do. So we want to embed that ergonomic awareness into instruction. So if you're on screen and you're chatting with your kids, you can actually talk about what you're going to do. Oh, I think I'm going to lower the shade a little bit and I need to remember to take my stretch break. Um, I'm going to change my mouse and this is how you can do it in order to have a, a, a cursor that's larger to see. So you can um, embed those instructions so that they're not something else to do. There's something that um, is sort of integrated into the instruction that you're providing. Okay. Those frequent breaks, take short stretch breaks. Every one to two minutes of stretching um, for every 20 to 30 minutes at the screen. And we've got some great, not only static stretch break uh, posters um, that are in the wakelet, but there's also a digital stretch break um, activity that you can download. Um, after every hour, it's important to change positions, take a rest break, make sure you hydrate. Um, so check out the free downloads. And if you have any um, ideas for stretch breaks, um, digital or otherwise, please put them in the chat and we will add them to the Google Doc. 
And at the beginning, I talked about how we know stress affects positioning. Um, and there, again, there are things we can do about it and things that we can't control, you know. Obviously, being in the world of a global pandemic is a very good reason to be stressed. We're all using different software. We're doing things in ways we haven't done before. Some of you are still working from home, jumping between a meeting in Google Meet to then a meeting in Zoom to then doing something on a school-based platform. And we know that that affects stress, but it also affects our ability to do good executive functioning decisions, right? We know we need our brains to function. Um, and trying to be mindful of this, knowing that there's a certain amount of stress that we can control and a certain amount of stress that is completely out of our hands. But if we're being mindful, we're taking breaks and we have good positioning um, in terms of the best case scenario, whether you're working at home or when you come into the office, those are things that can also reduce the effects of that stress. Um, and I think when we're looking at what, what we hope you take away is, you know, you can have the best ergonomic equipment, but it's only really helpful and ergonomic if you use it correctly and it's set up correctly for you. Um, and in optimal workspace, you need a good dedicated work area as much as possible. We know the dining room table sometimes is your dedicated work area. And in that case, make sure that you're getting a comfortable, well-fit chair to work with, your keyboard and mouse is set up in the best position possible, and your postural control, your, your trunk has as much support as possible. We want to make sure that you do build in breaks. For some of you, maybe that is setting a timer on your phone or your iPad that every 20 minutes reminds you just to move a little bit. Um, make sure you're getting up to, you know, take a break, whether it's making lunch or making dinner, stay hydrated. And it's the dual purpose of, yes, we want to make sure our nutrition and hydration is in place, but it also gives us the opportunity to stand up, get in a different position, walk around, and most importantly, give your eyes a break from that screen. Um, we want to do our best to reduce the repetitive movements. We're not going to eliminate them completely because obviously we have to type and we have to mouse to get to things. But are there times that you could open up Google Voice typing and dictate instead of just typing? Maybe you have to go back and use your, your keyboard to correct, but you're reducing the amount of repetitive moments that movements that you need to make with your hands. Um, we want to reduce those awkward postures as much as possible getting yourself in that prime kind of middle range of every joint working area um, will help reduce some of the possibilities of energy. And, and thinking very clearly about when we're using and how much force we're using when we do a task. Um, because again, those are those three factors that are gonna contribute to whether, you know, whether we're able to conquer this time and come out with um, as little injury as possible or whether we're going to end up with some kind of repetitive strain injury due to the situations we're working with. And I think most importantly, we really want to encourage you to use what you've got, you know, looking around your office or your home and trying to find the things, you know, some of the stuff that's in these, these pictures and videos, it's, yes, you can buy a $400 standing desk, but I know we all have boxes at home that we can use as building up things, you know, to the, the monitors at our eye level. Um, and I think really, really looking at using what you've got, especially for those times that you're working in a, in a suboptimal ergonomic position, I think is very, very important. Um, we do have two kind of... Go ahead. I'm so sorry. It's, it's empowering when you can share this information with people who are feeling a little bit helpless being at home, especially parents and caregivers that are trying to do the very best that they can for their children. And they have more than one child using more than one device. So when you can show them something simple that is protecting their child and making their child more comfortable, teaching them that they can, they can fix it, they don't need an expert. You're coaching them and you're empowering them. And I think, you know, and also using those materials they have um, will open, I think, some creative thinking when it's time to problem solve the next thing to not always jump to a solution we buy, but um, using the materials we have to, to create a solution from, from those found materials. Um, these are two infographics that we made um, to kind of be good reminders, um, whether that's 
Um, the posture reminder, just a quick mnemonic to kind of help you guys remember, um, or using, using the word ergonomics, some very quick things for you guys as um, resources uh, to help kind of think through how could we problem solve this either for yourself or for someone else. So these are both linked in the weeklet, and if you link on them in the presentation, they will also open up as PDFs for you. Um, a couple of additional resources that we wanted to add um, to make sure that you have access to them. One is, one of my favorite extensions is called Healthy Browsing. Um, and it does that reminder to every X number of minutes to blink, to drink water, to take a stretch break, or to check your posture. And again, you can adjust how frequently that happens, um, but it will um, kind of give you give you an extra cue if you're one of those people that needs a kind of extra external cue um, to, to remember to do those things. And then Calm, which has made some great apps in terms of relaxation and stress management, also has an extension. And you can actually list um, a set of websites that if, you're, if you put in um, Amazon or you put in Facebook, before you go to the Facebook website, it will redirect you to the page you see on the screen and it walks you through, you either choose doing deep breathing or seeing a nature scene for X amount, it's not forever, but uh, it's 10 to 15 seconds before it will redirect you to the website that you put in. And I think especially for those of us who are, who are prone to maybe jumping to Twitter or Facebook to kind of, you know, de-stress, it's just adding another element of screen time. And this just gives you that reminder to take a second before you go do that. Um, and you're in control of what site. So, it, you know, every time you work up your, bring up your work email, this doesn't have to come up, but um, it will just be a good reminder of either deep breaths or, you know, take a minute to look at a nature scene or meditate. Um, as a reminder, again, this is the link to the Wakelet um, that has kind of all of the resources we mentioned and more. Um, and it gives you the, the resources to either share out with others um, or to go back to and refer to you, um, yourself. And this is our contact information again. I'm very impressed, Judy. We made it just under the 1045 time. So we have a couple minutes for questions. If anybody has questions or has ideas of things that they may want to change. Um, and again, that bit.ly link, ergo NJATS20, will take you to this slides presentation. We would really questions? love to encourage you to uh, provide any resources that you've been using and any ideas that you have too. Yes, you can always um, find us either on Twitter, which those are our Twitter handles under our emails, or send us an email. And if it's something, you know, that you've been using and you feel like has been super successful, we can always add it into the weeklet. Um, you're welcome, Nicole. Hopefully you found something helpful and useful for you um, that you could make even a small change that will help that aching back, neck, eyes, arms, legs, body. Please feel free to use the chat. Um, I'd love to hear somebody's takeaway. If anybody wants to offer one of the takeaways, something that they didn't know or, or um, would like to explore further. You're welcome, Tammy. Yes, hold on to those Costco boxes, Sarah. Keep those Costco boxes. You never know what, uh, when you're going to find a situation when you can utilize those either for you or for a student. It's a great takeaway. Harrison, if you're interested in the pizza box idea, just Google pizza box. Uh, I, I shouldn't say Google. I know they're talking about saying use your browser to investigate. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, just uh, look, look, uh, look up pizza box easel and you'll find a half a dozen ideas and they're all adjustable and it's something that you can teach your kids to make or um, their parents to make as well. And Susan, I see your, your question about jaw clenching when on the computer. Um, one of the things that I have found helpful is my uh, desk chair at home where I'm doing a lot of work um, has a headrest. And I think if we can get your head in a good position and your shoulder in a good position, you may be less likely to jaw clench. But I think the other things I've found helpful 
were to make sure I'm doing that relaxation, those that 20, 20, 20 break, I, I'm quicker to catch when I'm clenching my jaw if I'm mindful of the breaks or I use like the Calm app um, to, to kind of force the issue of, of catching myself when I do that. I don't know, Judy, if you have any ideas. The only other thing I would add to that is I just uh, had a, a checkup with my dentist and he's seeing a lot more of this clenching too. And you can get an over-the-counter uh, uh, jaw guard or, or tooth guard, or you can have your dentist um, make a customized one. And sometimes it just kind of reteaches us where our jaw feels when it's, when it's in a typical position. But I, I, I experience that a lot, especially when I'm stressed, I clench. So you, I feel your pain. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, Tammy, yeah, sometimes switching that chair out and just getting your feet supported is a makes a world of difference. Um, and yeah, Harrison, it'll work for an iPad. Um, what I've done before with the pizza box is sometimes I end up kind of trimming or adding something so that the pizza box kind of has a has a has a place to lay in. Um, sometimes the foam inserts that come when you get a box that has something in it. You can use those foam pieces to kind of pad the iPads on the side, um, and and I think that will that will help. There's um, also a couple of PVC um, document um, holders and uh, um, iPad holders, phone holders. You can just adjust um, the the um, PVC links um, to go along with uh, the document that you want to or the, the device you want to have held. And Instructables has a couple of those. And um, also, uh, Therese Wilcombe's site has a couple of those as well. Um, Susan, what screens will da Dragon Mobile integrate with? Um, do you mean like what will allow the dictation to happen for Dragon? Can you tell me more? Um, and Harrison, the PVC things, there is a link to a couple of those versions of document holders in the Wakelet. But if um, not, um, just email us and I'll get you something more specific. Yeah, we'll put it, we'll put it in the Google Doc. You're going to have access to this interactive Google Doc. And so we can keep adding to it as speakers. And if you send us things, we can add what you've sent as well. Um, so that uh, we, we were told that not only is that Google Doc going to be saved, but it's going to be a live document. Yeah, and I'm going to go in and drop a couple of things in. So what she's referring to is the session 2.3 notes document that's on the schedule, the Google Sheet schedule. So I'll go ahead and add some links in um, now that I'm done presenting for the day. Um, I'll add some more links in um, to there and feel free to add the links in um, that will that will help. Um, Susan, Dragon Mobile, the things that I've used it with, I've been able to use it with uh, pretty much across the board in terms of, of screens and, and support. So if you have a specific question about something it's not working with, feel free to reach out by email and I'll be happy to help. Any other questions or ideas or thoughts? From what I understand, they're going to cut us off in a minute. I think they said they would leave the screens on for 50 minutes. So speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> or just email us. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for sitting with us and, and um, um, being interested in this topic. So yes, hopefully there's something small you can change so that at the end of today, um, one small portion of, of the stress and or uh, ergonomics issue is, is better for you. Um, so yes, again, thank you for taking the time to join us um, and, and chat with us and feel free to reach out to one or both of us if you have follow-up questions. And I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Bye everybody, take your break now. You have uh, about 10 minutes before the next session starts. So stretch, get some water, um, look at 2020, and we'll see you soon. Okay.